is the Divine Soul Rebel Podcast, brought to you by Elisabeth de Gironde Saint-Germain and Martina Metzetti, a Divine Soul Rebel freely, unapologetically expresses herself. She thrives by authenticity, freedom, love, joy, compassion and abundance in all she is and does. In this monthly podcast, Martina and Elizabeth share their voices and experiences with their Divine Soul Rebel sisters. To bring clarity, fun, lightness, teachings and empowerment from the individual journeys to share it with you, Divine Soul Sister Rebel. My name is Elizabeth de Charon de Saint-Germain. I'm the founder of Liberate and Express, and I was born with the heart of a trailblazer and the gifts of a shaman and a mystic. I'm also a recovered burned-out empath, a workaholic and a people-pleasing superwoman. I now am a singer whose energies transmutes and co-acts with my spirit team, with nature and with the spirits of music. I'm a fierce space holder who embodies the frequency of joy in all circumstances, especially when I work with the sacred rebels that I guide to as a holistic singing pedagogue, a mystic, an energy healer and a feminine leadership coach. I guide them to find their inner voice and into the finding and opening up to the medicine of their own voice and full soul expression. Hi, I'm Martina Metzeni. I'm a master intuitive energy healer, teacher, and a feminine embodiment coach. I've made it my mission to empower and inspire women globally in a radical, powerful love journey as a divine rebel, stepping into the divine feminine power through embodiment and doing the inner work through mindset reprogramming and aligned actions because you are a magical limitless being and you are here for a reason and i'm here to support those divine rebels to tap into your own uniqueness and becoming unapologetically yourself and to shine your light and your love Welcome to this first podcast of Martina and me of the Soul, Divine Soul Rebel podcast. And we're going to dive straight in because that's what we do, Martina and me, as uh, we're sort of the, uh, the, it's between scroll minded and very deep diving whales. We're somewhere in between those two, our, our topics. And when you're tuning in to this, um, just to give you a, a, a point of where are we starting? Today we're really starting with the, with sort of the essence of okay, what is needed to to um, create a soul led leadership as a divine soul rebel, and what we've came up with in the in in preparation of this creating this podcast is. What we both felt is that faith in yourself or in something, but faith is really essential. And this is what we're going to explore. And we're going to explore it in, in a beautiful, aligned way. Um, it's also, Martina, you work with this very much, the, 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 the sort of five-pointed star of of um, a root, so to speak, of how to look at a certain essence, a sort of really big framework within your life or, or belief or, or whatever you come upon. Today we're talking about faith and it's really about, okay, how do we connect to our core faith? And then how do we allow your core faith to and then claiming your core faith, birthing your core faith, and what are the aligned actions from your core faith? So I'm going to open it up now to 
whatever comes out of this. And um, we really want you to feel welcome and invited to connect with the both of us and, and give your comments below this and, and share it with us so that we can then develop a conversation. Right? Yes, thank you so much, dear. Hi, lovely people. Yes, I've learned through the most intense and amazing journey that embodiments and, and certain pillars are so, so important to whatever virtue or whatever positive emotion you want to shift or change or practice more or allow more in your life. And I found that as a master energy healer, uh, we need as well our physical body and we need our physical body to cooperate, but as well that our physical body understands what we want, what our higher self or soul wants. So it can align to what we talk about today, our core faith in every aspect of our life, but as well our wheel of life. So for example, regarding core faith, how can you connect to your core faith? And of mm. course you have so many different options to connect to your core faith. And I do it always through meditations and, and visualizations, but you have to co-work and cooperate with your physical body to be able to connect to it. Because there can be so many limiting beliefs or so many conditions or patterns or programs or just mud or just so many shit of things you've experienced in your life that it's not easy to connect to your core faith within. Because you have to be at times really brave and at times you will feel uncomfortable and at times you feel excited or insecure about about really believing in yourself and, and and into the depths of your being and into your gifts and your talents and your possibilities you have to work through all those layers and for some it's simply more than for others some souls chose just different paths right yeah um yeah. so these five pillars really help me to to start embodying it and mm. embodying is simply becoming so what do you need to do to become it and not just dream about it or desire about it or make an amazing vision board. And all those things are important. Don't get me wrong. But mm -hmm. it's more. It's more than just, you know, putting it like, no, it's not putting, it's like, it's more than, than presenting it in the future. Because we create our futures now. It's also very uh, interesting because faith, is such a huge topic uh, mm. and it's it's in a way very intangible but the results are immensely tangible mm. uh, so faith is something that um, truly deeply uh, connects me to my physical experience because mm. if if I uh, don't have access to that core faith, which is, okay, what, what is your core faith? You first have to figure that out. And in a way, do you really have to figure it out or is it already within you? So these are topics to explore in within your own life, but then um, living this, um, living in the becoming of who we are within the within the center of that core faith it's really 
it's really <laughs> to to get it out of your head out of the future pacing it always and bringing it in the here and now and even bringing it in the in the backwards motion all of those things that happen to you are you able to put are you, is your faith able to put it to the test so to speak i don't believe so much that faith is testing us unless we have a deep desire to be tested which can be mm -hmm. completely okay i do believe that there is a place and a time and a longing for that and if you have that you will be tested there's nothing against it and, and there's nothing it's not better it's not worth it's just what's your the soul's desire so but your faith if you look at it backwards uh, in the past, um, I see this also with people who do bi biographical work and then look back at, okay, how has my faith brought me here? Or what, what looking back, do it. We have both been very deep into Theta healing. You're even more than me. And then you, you go back and you see events and you look at it from the creator's perspective. So you look at it from, from a point view of deep faith. And all of a sudden the meaning changes because that now becomes part of your core being, your core essence of, of what life has been calling you in for you. Whatever desire you have to be incarnated right here is now calling you forward like okay this is you this is who you are can you feel that almost like a physical experience and 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 can all the stories that we've built around whatever happened whatever is in our life now and that we want to manifest how is how does that relate to faith to that sort of what i call a deep feeling of of trust in the wisdom of life. It's so beautifully said, and as well, how this works with our physical body. And what I found is when you are able to look back to the past with a sense of compassion and yeah. with a sense of curiosity and kindness towards yourself things will make more sense. And you, if you are able to be open and honest towards yourself, you can see why you, for example, had in certain situations or experiences more or less faith and how that turned out, how that turned out in your physical reality and what kind of things you manifested. And what I've seen as well since being a really young girl, there was always some whispering within, some, mm. some faith in my heart. And I call it light, but I call it as well radical, powerful love that always was there, sometimes in the background, sometimes more, more present because it was just necessary. I was going to listen to it, but it was always guiding me. It was always guiding me to more light and to more radical, powerful love and to have more faith in myself but as well what you said faith in 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 your soul faith in in your soul's mission here on earth and and faith in in the divine or in source or in creator that that you are supported and that you are being helped when you ask for it that this is not a lonely journey, though it can feel really lonely at some times, but there is always help and guidance um, available. And what I found when diving deeper and trusting more um, on my faith and surrendering, it's that you will have to step out of your comfort zone. And sometimes... It feels so scary and sometimes it can feel so vulnerable and I can I can feel my voice already when I when I tune into those emotions because you will explore the depths of your being more 
and you will explore more the amazingness of our being and our own unique frequencies and blueprints. Yes. And it's, it's a deep, deep journey. And I found as well the most rewarding one we can give to ourselves when we really, really align and tune into our own faith. Yeah. Oh, you know, I was thinking today, looking at this faith. Okay, how did we, uh, the, what was the first time I truly, truly, truly connected to my faith? It's, it's the, okay, what is the core of the core of the core? And I remember um, I was 11 and, and, and I was with a couple of friends and I did something completely out of my normal pattern and i went with them and uh we had a we had a we we played a game and the game was let's um let's move on the on the on some it, it was something we, we we did something crazy and i came became in an accident and i hang uh, on but this was something my arm got really stuck it was a quite dangerous situation and and what it what happened was that i completely i i completely got out of my body it was mm -hmm. out of, although i was within but i remember always having felt this anxiety of something the fear of something that might go happen it was the the fear of not daring to be completely like let's go into life and at that point exactly at that point i was like okay let's let's just get into the life and then i got exactly at that same moment i got an accident and wow. in the accident, i had a sort of a because of that accident i really got a very short but profound experience where i had um an almost an outer body um uh, uh um, when people die, when they have this this experience of a near death experience, mm -hmm. I did so my life back. I had all those experiences, but what happened? The most profound thing for even when I was already released from that from that situation where where I got completely stuck, and I was lying on the ground. I heard a lot of people around me, but also. And that moment when the pain was unbearable and I was just shut out of my body, I felt nothing but love. Everything was love. And I saw that whole paradigm, which made me forever the rebel that I am, shifted because I saw that everything that I had learned up to that point which was that everything was in a hierarchical situation of someone is worth more or less. There are, are systems that keep us in place of a belief that we are worthy or we are not worthy. And we have to strive and we have to please and we have to push and we have to change in order to be worthy enough to be loved. And mm. at that moment, everything completely vanished all those beliefs completely exploded out of my system because i saw that everything was love that the bird who sang was the highest creatures pos creature possible that the people who were calling like oh my god she's in danger the, the whole the panic and i felt so much love i want to say no, people, everything is okay. I'm being taken care of. I, I, am, I am living the most blissful moment that I've ever lived. And, and I saw that even I, I could, from where I was sitting, I could feel all the little uh, ants as well, who were crawling on the, on the, on the, on the street. And I thought, oh my God, you're so beautiful. You're giving so much to this world as an end. And, mm. and every, everyone was in this deep, um, deep 
being loved, being of service, being of worthy, everything had its place. Mm. And that is, that has, no one was, has been able to teach me that before. I, I could not find that in any church or in anything, but it was within, strangely enough, I found it outside of when I was a little bit outside of my body, but also within my body because I could see the level. That, and I was not able to talk about that for a long, long time, Martina, and I forgot all about it. But if you, if I look back at, okay, what was the time that I could connect to it for the, in, my re, in my life, it was that exact moment. And it was also like, and then it's it's so funny because we forget after all the, the anxiety I, it it all came back but i was always able to i was never able to forget that we are actually all worthy that we don't have to prove anything and it made me forever change when when i look at war when people do the most crazy things for the polarity that is within them that wants to be experienced somehow. And then I look at that and I think, oh my God, you are worthy. You don't have to prove it. You are worthy. And you are loved. And still we have to go through it. Yeah. If we choose to do that, if we, if we all believe that is what we need to do, we need to go through it. And then, then I, at this point, especially uh, where we are right now, when we, we feel that there's so much more awareness, I don't know if you feel that as well, but I, 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 I think so, the awareness of, well, we're actually living in a very changed world where our ability to bring in light and change the world with our frequency um so we ha also have to be really uh it's it's time to become really um almost precise almost very very yeah i i, I still look at life like a big play field but it's also like Look where you're bringing your attention to. Look where you are bringing your frequency. And um, is your faith able to, to see the bigger picture of things? Are you able to look not past the hurt, but even through the pain and then see like, well, there is something that is even that holds it all together in a way and i think that to me is faith that whatever is going on in the world that there is uh, there's this beautiful uh gospel we've got the whole world he's got the whole world in his hands and i don't think that there is a he per se but this whole feeling of there is something a consciousness a whole field that is holding everything in its hand and maybe we are the field. I'm not quite sure about that. And my head gets sort of exploded with all of those thoughts. Mm -hmm. But still, that feeling of there's a deep faith within me uh, that that it is time to to find your own core within that. I and I am hundred percent sure that my core speaks to me my core face speaks to me and someone else's core face speaks to them and that is that real freedom of spiritual belief that you need to be able to be free in that thought to find that and to and to be able to lose it and then refine it and change it or whatever it's there's that that's the rebel part in me very much that I, I, for me, I cannot find it. I can learn from other people, but I cannot find it in the face of someone who says you have to believe this 
otherwise. It is mm -hmm. felt it's no, we're actually already within it. Mm -hmm. It's very kind of you to offer me a lot of guidance, mm -hmm. but you are not the authority of me. Mm -hmm. No one is. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing this. I had goosebumps. Because sometimes we have those wake up calls or accidents yeah. or maybe a disease or an illness yeah. to, to really shake our lives. And, and I call it like death and rebirth, death and rebirth, death and rebirth. And all to to really connect to our core, to really connect to our core faith, but as well to, for some visible, for some invisible fields of unconditional love and light, which is always there. And to me, that's the guidance. To me, that's the support. And as well, of course, we have masters, we have angels, we have so many beings of light who are here to support us. But those experiences, those intense things that are shaking our worlds are simply sometimes helping us to choose. To choose, okay, do we want to live our lives this way? Or do we want to live our lives from the light and the love and the, and the deep faith within that we can do anything and that we are amazing beings and we can create our own heavens on earth but a lot of the times what we do as human beings is skip the emotions skip the skip the pains mm -hmm. skip the angriness skip the yeah. grief the sadness all the things that happens as experiences to teach us yeah. the life lessons to teach us the wisdom to teach us what we want to choose because we have a free will and every day we can choose again and that's you know our soul leadership yeah we're completely open and free to choose every day but we need our consciousness and as well allow the emotions yeah the, uh, allow, it's the right? allowing part we're talking about right mm -hmm. so we have this mm -hmm. opportunity to live this life, to be here on this planet of love, actually mm -hmm. a very healing planet in a way, mm -hmm. uh, where we are invited to heal so many uh, convictions that want to be shaken up and to be brought into the light. But we have to say yes to the opportunities to allow these uh, lessons to be learned and these, these convictions to change into something that that is inspiring that is that has a, the, the the opportunity to grow into something even more beautiful than we are in right now and i completely believe that is possible but we need to allow it i was in a game i, I was on a retreat with two friends and one of the we did this uh, this this game of life or um, uh, I don't know what the name was and and I got one card and it had a sort of a a a, a life lesson thing to me and I was so shaken by it and I I really it 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 got an instant like ow and I I was throwing the card away and I said. No, I don't want this. Shut up! <laughs> and I, I really I started to cry. And then my friend said, Hmm, Elizabeth, not quite sure if that's an option. <laughs> to just skip it. Okay, no, I don't want this. Next. I don't want it. <laughs> but do you want to share what was on the cards? Because Ooh. I get curious now. Okay, so the 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 uh, the car it, it's really really personal but i'm going to share it the car okay, <laughs> had to do with um not oh my god what was it something about the essence of trust 
Mm -hmm. I was still not able to trust people completely. Mm -hmm. And that was a lack of brotherhood and sisterhood. Wow. And it, it was so painful because this is coming straight of a childhood trauma where we were surrounded with uh, an energy of deep uh, dividing energy um, and, and, and oppressing energy that, um, that was suffocating all three of us as children. And sometimes in these abusive situations, you need a breather. You need to feel like, oh God, I need a little bit of safety. Oh God. And then there was a situation where one of us would be picked out and would be like, and this is the awful thing of childhood abuse that you, you need sometimes as a child, you so deeply long for a little bit of safe space that when you see oh, the attention is now on someone else, you feel this relief of, oh, oh God, finally, I have a little bit of peace. Let's, okay. I, I'm so sorry for you, but I'm going to 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 enjoy my free time. So in a way, you always felt the your own guilt of throwing someone else under the bus, not consciously, but unconsciously. There's this little bit of oh, you want you're searching for safety, you're searching for a time out, and you see someone else is getting. Uh, the emotional abuse and then that means that you are safe for a while and then you know that if i think that the other parts are, the other ones are also thinking this because that is what you and we had a conversation years later where we sort of um told this shared this with each other and we were so relieved that we were not the only ones who carried this this awful feeling of i can never and, and and out of that came this belief of i can never fully trust people because when shit hits the van they will throw me under the bus to save themselves wow and that is how wars end that is how wars start mm. and it was such a really deep feeling of recognition of okay maybe even that is the truth mm. that is the truth and and you know that you don't have that for your kids for instance you will give your life for your kids mm. it's just what happened you will do that mm. but you cannot expect that from everyone mm -hmm. and to live with that that feeling of our human core wound so to speak of we don't want to die so simple we don't want to endure this pain so therefore you can expect sometimes people doing weird shit to you in order to not feel their own pain mm -hmm. and so the whole point of that card is can you then put your core faith within yourself enough in love enough in faith enough your trust in, in the whole system your whole the, the, the soul your whole soul journey enough that you also are that i to speak of me at, at that car that i feel enough um power within me to and, and enough faith within me to say yes to yes life is freaking vulnerable and i'm saying yes to it because if i don't i cannot fully live it i cannot and i can also not expect people to always be there for me so i need to have a level of taking that responsibility for myself and also know that there are also there are and, and I have found I have I've given and got the evidence that there are 
always people or powers or spiritual beings surrounding me and I am never fully alone. I'm never, mm. I've never been out of um, help. Mm. Although I needed to feel that essence of being completely alone to allow the fullness of faith to kick in, mm. in a way. Mm. So, whoops, that was a big topic there. <laughs> wow. Thank you for, for sharing this so openly. And I think, indeed, what is so, so connected to faith is trust and safety. Yeah. And, yeah. and what I've experienced as well as a child, when there's not a safe environment where you can explore yourself, when you can explore your identity, and as well when your questions or your answers or your insecurities are not validated, Mm -hmm. You know, the journey of untrusting and unsafety starts, right? And then as we grow older, it's almost like unlearning all of those things to really connect to, to, the, to the highest truth of all of these things. Yeah. And, and, and what I experienced, and I really recognize what you shared um, from your childhood experience, is that um, oh my God, so many things pop in. It's that for me, what I've learned most by not trusting and by not having so much faith and by not having the validation when I grew up is mm -hmm. holding space for myself. Yeah, the holding space for myself was the, the biggest lesson of everything because... What I found out is when I was I was looking for validation outside of myself and I was looking for the safety outside of myself and I was looking for the trust outside of myself because I I wasn't learned that it was already in me. Mm -hmm. Because there was no safe environment to practice that and to to grow it stronger, to grow the core faith stronger, to grow the core trusting within stronger and the core safety. So I had to almost, no, not almost, I had to relearn it again by holding space for myself, by experiencing a lot of disappointments. Yeah. And every time I was disappointed, I needed to be there for myself. And that was so shitty and it was sometimes so hard. And and when I was young, I was really good in resenting and rejection. You know, it was everyone else's fault. Yeah. But not mine. I was not taking my responsibility. So I think we're going now already to, to the next pillar. This is about claiming. What kind of things do you have to claim within? Yeah. So it's the trust. It's the safety, but as well the responsibility. Yeah. For your own happiness and well-being and, and and almost feeding your core faith of yourself. Mm -hmm. And I did it through more meditations. And what as well really, really helped me in this process is yoga. Is yes. to practice being consciously aware of my of my physical body and to start communicating with my body and to start feeling where my body was disbalanced or was missing something or there was a gap or whatever name name you give it and and mantras you know mantras that were really helping me supporting me and then in the sense of the i am statements so how was that for you? What what helped you with with claiming your your core faith? Well, when I'm when I tune into that, I see that the the claiming or almost the the, the claiming is exactly what you said. It's it is the holding space 
for for that this the holding space for the in 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 especially with about the faith part holding space for that there is something that i might not always see right now but i just know it is there and and i must say that the birthing process of that really came out of following what gave me an immense joy and that 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 brought me into that moving sounding feeling space of bliss which for me has always been music and nature mm -hmm. so for me looking at nature being in nature and and i am someone if i walk into nature i hear i hear it's a I, I always thought that everybody had that, but I hear the um, going out of nature in nature and, and also looking at paintings, I hear the music of that, mm. which is also a little bit overwhelming sometimes. It's not always, but when I just open myself, I can hear that. So when I look, for instance, in, uh, we're, we're walking in the Rijksmuseum in, in, in The Hague, uh, in Amsterdam, I'm looking at Rembrandt and I'm, I'm hearing, I'm hearing the painting and it will look somewhere. It's, it's a little bit overwhelming, a little bit. And then at the same time, it's so beautiful. But in order for me to allow that birthing process and, and, and also what I want my my deep connection with singing that i have from a very young age and then developed of course within my my uh, education uh that i've yeah i've never stopped learning uh even when education was finished i'll, I'll just go on but that that birthing process of what the unheard blessing of sound the unheard um manifestation of higher um frequencies frequencies of sort of colors of medicine of everything that is around us that the moment that we let it inside of our body or we let it inside of our being um that is allowing and that is claiming and that is slowly birthing the, the to me the sort of the truth of faith mm. i don't know how to say it differently to me it becomes very i cannot find the words at this point mm. they, it, it, is it not like becoming more and more unapol unapologetically your authentic self your divine soul rebel because when yeah. you connect and yeah. allow and claim and birth it's almost like birthing yourself birthing your core being yeah here again yeah and also i think it also connects to a, a deep sense of purpose mm -hmm. because, for instance with this whole with all of those powers that we have and and i have a lot of weird powers and then, and, and then, for instance, looking at, okay, what is my work all about? What would I, if, if I could do anything in the world? And then it's like, yeah, I, I, I really want to learn people how to tune into, to, to use their voice, to use their body as, and, and, and to let in that voice as a medicine, as a light language, how to channel that and to just open them up. And, mm -hmm. and it's not about singing pretty, and maybe it is for whoever want that, but it is about allowing all those frequencies to move within your body. And then, and, and we all have those just a little bit, we all have bring in different, Mm, sort of codes, soul desires, whatever it is, mm. to, to birth what you are here for. 
Mm -hmm. Your mission, your purpose, right? Yeah, mission, purpose. I've always sort of blocked those words <laughs> because it's so big and it's also, you cannot sort of just decide it because it's it will find you. And at the same time, it's very, it's very helpful to name them or claim them and, and, and then indeed take aligned actions to get to, 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 to grow those things and build, manifest your life in a way that is aligned with all that, that you desire and, and all that you want. But then yes, and sometimes it's simply more than one thing, right? It's not exactly. It's, and that is can sometimes cause can cause the confusion or or the overwhelm. But it's like you know, being connected to your core faith and being so proud of yourself that you are stepping into your own leadership and, and be your own leader. Be your own leader to create whatever you want to create or whatever is meant to be created. And it's as well, and we had so many talks about this, right? It's to become really visible with those special and unique gifts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to not hide anymore and to, you know, express yourself clearly and yeah. to... Some call it, you know, get out of that spiritual closet. This is who I am. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because when the faith grows and when the faith becomes becomes bigger, it's it's like the outer world gets less important. Because what you said when you um had that experience when you were eleven, you are love and you are enough, right? There's yeah. no there's no need for validation from the outside and then it will flow more and it will and and as well what i feel it's it's the joy comes in yes. the joy of of being alive and and celebrating yourself and celebrating um your life and your past simply because you exist and this is our birthright right we are already worthy of that yeah and it's oh I get excited. Yeah, I get yeah, so yeah. excited. It's the energy of, of as well, the power and being really present and peaceful within, but as well, I feel the passion starts yeah. to, to get bigger and pops up more. Okay, let's do this. Yes, yeah. like the, the curiosity and excitement of kids, of just playing and exploring. Yeah, and I love that. Uh, um... Uh, comparison with kids playing because I was thinking about the whole you have to be visible woo, woo, woo. it's also so a little bit like no you don't have to stand on the stage put on your best dress it's really about the essence the feeling of um, especially if you want to to tune into your 5d new earth uh, awareness of coming from love instead of fear mm -hmm. uh, coming from a place of there is so much possible instead of we have to get out of the mess and mm -hmm. sometimes that can be very powerful as well i do not mm -hmm. deny the, the, the power of that uh, but there's this feeling when you when remember when when your friends just uh, rang at the door or uh, came around at the back door and say, ah, you want to play? And, and all the, ah, yeah, 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 can I go? Can I? And it just, mm -hmm. you just went. Nobody mm -hmm. had to explain anything. You just got into the vibe of something awesome is going to happen. And I'm mm -hmm. going to be there with every little ounce of my full attention. And there's mm -hmm. nothing in me that says, nah, nah, I don't think so. I don't see the value. Can you please explain to me in five points why I should follow you? Hmm. It's not like that. It's just you bring your energy. You bring hmm. what excites you, what truly lights you up. Now, mm -hmm. now I'm interested. Mm -hmm. Come on, bring it on. Mm -hmm. 
And this is, I think, this example of just a kid at the door asking you to come to play. That's like, that's exactly the airline's action we should take as divine soul rebels, right? Yeah. Those aligned actions that will sometimes that that what you say lights you up, but as well give you them the sensations of of happiness, of joy, of well being, of abundance, and and to see the beauty of everything, not only ourselves. Or others, but, but the beauty, the love, the light in everything that exists, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and, and it's, it is, the, okay, if you look at the house of this, because we are, when you get older, you, you experience all kind of life experience that sort of say like, well, you're not a kid, actually. Blah, 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 blah. It's sort of... Mm -hmm. it's, and also, your whole ego has this... Uh, wants to be very... Reminds you of how important it is that you present yourself as a, as a real uh, trustworthy authority, authority of whatever field you are in. Mm. And, and it's fake identities, right? And yeah, just masks. At some point it is fake and at a deeper point it's also true. But it's it's more about can you tune, do you dare to tune into the to the deeper deeper presence, the deeper uh, aligned, I am here on this planet, therefore I have a right to be here, therefore I already have an authority. Uh, mm -hmm within me and and yes it's it is really good to to own and what we what we say claim that part of mm. you but then also not be defined by it in such a way that it suffocates you because the the rebel within you needs room to yes, because it's not framed right it's not no. staccato it's it's it can change. Yeah. And as well, I think what we sometimes forget is we have our cycles as women. Excellent. And the influences of our of our cycle and the moon. Yeah. You no, know, sometimes we are more inwards orientated, and sometimes we're like, oh, here we are. Now it's time. And the authority, it's it's like it's it's kind and it's not with with arrogance or mm -hmm. or less or more no it's the it's the validating and and acknowledging and honoring our our, our own authority right yeah. yes and this this journey is i i feel where we can discuss only this topic of core faith um forever because there's so much to explore I know, you know, mm. I, w I would really love to go in uh, another time, another podcast, in indeed within those cycles that we are, mm. that we experience, and that give us the full, um, in a way, I was, sometimes I was looking at, at um, lives of our human other parts, the man in our lives and the man that we see around us who also live through those cycles, but do not have the gift of, uh, of their menstrual cycle. Mm. So they can feel it, experience it as well, but they experience it in a different way. And, and I think I feel truly blessed as a woman, although I, I very much, and, and we can go into that another time, that there, mm. there are, we can look at it as curses or as blessings, but we, mm. that is the whole, everything in life, we can look at it, we can bless ourselves with it, or we can curse ourselves with it. It's very much up to us, because we have free will. And also, I love this. Yeah, and also mm -hmm. so 
that is another topic I believe in. And, and, and looking back at the whole faith, um, because faith has always been within our world's development, something which is an, an, an utter blessing and an utter curse as well. And, and then finding, okay, what is it? How do you choose as a, as a being, an authentic, pre-willed, divine soul rebel, what is it that you choose life to be? Mm. Do you want it to be a blessing? Do you, do you want it to be? And sometimes it's both. Mm. And there's something weirdly, oddly satisfying in that as well. It's, mm. it's like it, uh, there are sometimes we have these cookies in the Netherlands called pink cookies. Mm. And they're sort of disgustingly nice. Mm. And sometimes we need to feel both aspects mm. of it's disgusting and it's lovely at the same time mm. to get us out of our our belief of polarity to get into mm. it can also be both mm. so, yeah, so that you don't have to choose you can have it both right but mm, what i but don't you think that with this core faith is when you are able to connect and claim and allow and birth and have those aligned actions in your life that it's like an anchor. That it's like an anchor that will help you and support you no matter what pops up in your life. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like riding the waves. And some it's more calm, sometimes it's more calm, sometimes it's more intense. And you're like, are like shit, what is this? But there's always that anchor within a faith, you know, this too shall pass. I can do this. Okay, now I need to ask for support or help. Yeah. But there's always like light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. And I feel when, when you have this anchor, things will be and feel much lighter. Absolutely. And also that the anchor, what you're, you're saying, the anchor, um, I noticed that I have, I think it has to do with having in my horoscope a four-time Scorpio and a four-time Virgo aspect, which is wow. kind of crazy. <laughs> so I like to have the both of the polarities together. But then there's an the aspect of, you know what? It doesn't matter if it's this or that, but you can always ask for help. Mm -hmm. and, and that allowing to be helped, allowing yourself to go into, you know what? Yes, I am the creator of this life, this manifestation that I'm living in. But at the same time, I allow myself, I'm, I'm, I now come to a level of an anchor of, of faith that mm -hmm. I allow myself to ask for help. Mm. and receive that help mm. and, and I do not always know where that help is coming from mm. but I know that if I do not ask this help mm -hmm. I am not opening the doors that are available to me mm. and because I am I have faith in the whole whole idea of being someone who is able to choose of free will that is within me, the deep faith within the, that I have a free will, I also mm. have to send out that question of, mm. I want to be helped. I, I'm not pleading for it. I'm not mm. doing that because coming from, I don't want this. No, I am in this situation. I realize it. I want help. Mm -hmm. And then but this is as well, you know, the sisterhood, right? And that, yeah, you know, when we experience something within, it's all, it's as well being experienced in the collective consciousness and in the group consciousness on a bigger scale, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. 
-hmm. And as well, what I found is when you are able to ask for support and mostly make for some of us, I had to learn to receive support. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you accelerate and you fast track your process, right? You don't have to hang in the drama or the conflicts or the confrontations for a day or a week or months. It's just, it's fast tracks. And then you are like, okay, the anchor is there. And it's as well a reminder, right? When you get help or support in whatever way, it's a reminder, okay, the faith is there, right? And it's as well, I feel like um, it's, it's not only requesting, it's about accepting, but it's well knowing that you are so worthy of getting exactly that help that you need or, or that support that you need at that time. Yeah. Mm. I love this so much, Martina. Mm. That, um, um, so I think we both have elements of um, so, for instance, I just created this gift about light language uh, and and finding your authority, your inner authority, with help of light languages, light coding. And I know you have so many beautiful gifts as well. I think it's a good idea to put them uh, below here in the link. Mm. Our gifts that are true that we know will help you if you just yeah, I just if you want a little bit of help because this is the thing there is always help available mm. and and um but it is it's this little part of asking for it just just mm. say yes and it's always there um and so yeah that, that there are elements of that that we can bring in and i would invite you if you listen to this to to really go and look within your own toolbox because sharing your gifts with other people is is the, the, it's you come from a place of service of enoughness mm -hmm. and, and this helps you i i have always felt this accelerates your your ability to 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 receive the, the blessing of faith within you. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, just this, it's the, the giving it forward. So you don't mm -hmm. have to do this in the capacity of a business. You can also, if you, if you are a really someone who's really amazing at baking a pie and you know mm -hmm. someone would be very happy to taste that just invite that person mm -hmm. and have tea with them mm -hmm. and give them that pie and just you don't even have to say it but you know mm -hmm. what you did or or it's i don't know it's just really it can be really tiny or a big thing but if you come but it's like it's like, it's like do, doing it in in everything that you do on a daily basis well, that Maybe. would be ideal, but sometimes we have to start with little things, right? I know, but for what I mean with this is, for example, when I have to do like household things. Yeah. It's like when I want to dive deeper and, and practice more this core faith, I will practice it with everything I do. Yeah. It's when I drive the car, it's when I do the dishes, it's when I have a business call. It's, 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 you know, you don't limit yourself in this. And it's like what you say, you create a ripple effect. And sometimes it's just smiling at a stranger. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, and, I've, and as well, it, 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 it doesn't have to cost anything. That's uh, as well, I think, a really big misconception. It has to cost a shitload of money. No, not, not at all. There are so many things, like everything is available. And there are so many things available for free, right? So I think, thank you for, for, for bringing this up. We will share the things that are relevant for, for the divine 
so sisterhoods, the divine soul rebels to to support and to create this ripple effect. Yeah. To to grow this this network, right? Yeah, and I think it's a very good point because we we <laughs> especially when <laughs> we go to the journey of being a soul rebel, oh my god, it feels so freaking alone for a long, mm. long time. It's mm. like, is there no one out here? It can be mm. a whole lot of inner drama. And then when you raise your hand, there are actually a lot of us. So many. It's like, oh, <laughs> this is actually, I am unique, but I'm not a unique in that sense. Mm. <laughs> it's also very beautiful. Mm. Uh, but it's I think amazing. we should be, we should wrap it up for now. And yes. then next month there's another podcast and um oh what well, leave us a review garlic <laughs> ciao for now ciao for now bye bye